free gold. Well, maybe not. <laughs> now, there's a lot of well-meaning videos out on the internet showing people or attempting to show people how to recover gold from electronics and gold from gold-plated jewellery. Well, it turns out that there's some quite bad news. Now, the only real way to do this successfully is using one of the chemical methods. And if you use the chemical methods, there is a bit of a problem, which they don't go into, and that is disposal of the residue. Now, from a simple setup such as you see here, with a one gallon bucket and uh, all the rest of it, you will find that to professionally get rid of that residue in a legal and approved way is going to cost you several hundred dollars. Now, you say to yourself, oh, well, I'll just pour it down the drain, but that's not going to happen. And why is it not going to happen? Because the water companies actually monitor what goes into the water table, and they will trace it back to the manhole that you poured it down, and from there, doubtless, to yourself. Besides which, it is very, very ecologically irresponsible to dispose of chemical waste in this matter. No, no matter how he tells you that the acid is neutralised, etc, etc, it is still chemical waste, and you can tell that by the smell, which is absolutely friggin' horrible. Now, there's a lot of other videos out there telling you how to recover mechanically gold off these items by abrading it away and really for all these people and this includes the chemical guys I've got a bit of bad news and that is on most electronics that gold layer is less than one micron thick and that is one one hundredth of a millimeter less than so what does this mean? This means that if you've got memory cards, I've sat down and worked it out, in order to get an ounce of gold, you would need to scrap, assuming that you're 100% successful in recovering all the gold, which you won't be, you will need to s scrap over 400 memory cards to get one ounce of gold. And it's more like 600 when you take the wastage into account. So you think about where you're getting these cards from. Are you buying them secondhand? And then you think about the cost of the chemicals. And you think about the cost of disposal. And you suddenly realise why companies don't actually reclaim gold. Certainly when I used to work in the electronics industry, if something went wrong with a gold-plated board, we just threw it away. Because the amount of gold on there was worth next to nothing. It was actually le worth less than the amount of copper that was on the board. And now here's a little something for those who are looking at mechanical ways to scrape off this gold, which people are doing. Well, the bad news here is that what you're scraping off contains an awful lot of nickel because underneath every piece of gold plating is quite a thick layer of nickel certainly thicker than the gold is. So you see these people, they scrape it off and and they rinse out the scotch bright pads and all the rest of it and then they melt it and they come up with this button that they say is gold. Well, it's not gold really, it's kind of goldish. <laughs> it contains more nickel than gold and of course copper and silver and a few other things. Now, you also come to those who attempt to use acid to dissolve the copper away from the gold. That's fine, it works, it gets rid of all the copper. What it leaves you with is the nickel. And once again, you are in the situation where you're melting it down, and what you're melting it down, you're actually forming a nickel-gold alloy. And that gold button that you make, that you're so proud of, actually contains very little gold. It might, if you're lucky, have 5% gold in it. A good way to work out 
how much gold you're getting is to actually look at the area, the square area of gold you're getting. Because you're looking at 1611 square centimeters at one micron thick to get one ounce of gold. That's worse news for jewellery because jewellery is often 0.03 microns thick and in that case you need 53,718 square centimetres which is 6 square metres. Now are you processing, processing 6 square metres of scrap gold plated jewellery? I don't think so. Are you processing 600 memory cards? I don't think so. And then you say, what about motherboards? They've got a lot of gold in. And the bad news there is they've got less gold than the memory cards because all you've got is a gold flash, which is exactly the same as goes over jewellery. It's not even an electrochemical process. It's a chemical process they use to put it on. And it is very, very, very thin. There is hardly any gold. You may think you're getting a lot, but that, is I'm afraid is the nickel. If you work out the square area of what you've got you'll be able to tell pretty reliably how much gold you're likely to get out of it. So there you go and now you know why there are no big commercial operations recovering gold from electronics. Unless of course it's military electronics. Now military electronics is a little different especially the connectors on military electronics they can often have 50 microns of gold which is well worth recovering and the companies do that we used to we used to send them away to Johnson Matthey and have the gold recovered so I hope this has been of some use to you and uh, will prevent you from rushing out and spending a small fortune refining some nickel Thank you very much. Bye. Go and cash flow.